record high in a number of the key hotspots, the main focus in America as the market's nervous then in regard to political and business leaders potentially putting the brakes on the gradual reopening of the economy. That's the main focus of the briefing for this morning. I'm Anthony Chung and this is your market briefing for today, the Wednesday 24th of June. Quickly then, just before I begin, just wanted to say I'm going to be speaking with Dale Pinkert uh, in the US ahead of the NYSE Open today, so 2 p.m. London. Him and I are just going to be talking about everything in markets at the moment, but predominantly focused on the kind of macro fundamental side of things, given that's my specialist area. So I will drop this webinar registration link in various chats and on the video on YouTube. So if you want to join us live, that'll be in the 30 minutes before the opening bell on NYSE. So let's just go back to the chart then and look at what's going on today and evident um, well, clearly evident is the risk off nature of yesterday's move. Um, we had California, Florida, Texas each hit records for new cases on Wednesday, while Arizona is at its peak in terms of hospitalizations. Um, in short, before I get to all of those stats, US political and business leaders um, looking at potentially then just pulling back on that gradual planned and phased reopening of the economy, which is obviously pivotal in order to get the US economy back firing again. Uh, and this comes then after not just those areas that I mentioned in California, Florida and Texas, but New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, they're all requiring now visitors from, from other country hotspots to self-quarantine for a period of 14 days, which is obviously also going to have repercussions then on the ability of the economy to get back to some degree of normality. Um, there are other states at the moment that have this already in play, that being Alabama, Arizona, Arkansas, Florida, North and South Carolina, Utah and Texas already have those quarantine measures in place, given specifically the fact that they're the ones who are seeing quite a rapid increase in cases over the last two weeks or so. Um, one of the main areas here, North Carolina, they've said they're going to freeze any reopenings for three weeks. So this is one of the main things we were talking about when the markets kind of spilled over. Um, what Last Friday, Friday before, when Apple came out, and they were talking about then uh, closing some of their stores. Uh, and although that was just one company, it was kind of indicative then of one of the greatest fears given a market that's fairly ever. Uh, elevated at the moment on the back of stimulus measures from both the government and also the central bank, meaning that as the market sees it at the moment, there's enough stimulus coming to offset then the fact that yes, there's a negative uh, economic situation happening right now, but that will help support the strength of the recovery going forward. Uh, the biggest problem here is then obviously the uh, the development of the virus in a, in a second wave and it being significant in some of these areas or looking so is meaning then that some of that optimism continues to fade and and yesterday I think was the first day that we started to see other more uh, kind of real reality kicking in that perhaps this reopening plan cannot be implemented to quite the speed that some may have first considered so yeah, yesterday equities really came under some pressure, so finished lower across the board. Um, as you would imagine then, the dollar strengthened in what we have been seeing is that more kind of flight to quality move to the greenback and the dollar again up in the overnight session. The Dixie's trading up about 0.15%, so just looking at these major currency pairs in the top left. Uh, Euro dollar just teetering around, testing its overnight Asia Pacific low at the moment. Uh, down about 19, 20 pips as to his cable uh, at a similar price point at the moment. So worth keeping an eye on those those downside Asia pack lows. Um, as we come into the market here in, in the UK mainland Europe, um, T notes have moved higher overnight, albeit fairly flat in the last few hours, uh, about two ticks and gold after actually seeing a kind of counterintuitive move in, of sorts just being rejected from a quite important level on the, the higher time frames. If we go on to a monthly, you can see we're really testing up here as we go into the $1,800 handle. Uh, so some real key historical levels that will go back several years and uh, just a bit of a pullback, quite aggressive yesterday from that point. But again, this morning, just looking to squeeze a little higher once again, uh, and coming up to that pivot level in the futures, uh, which in itself, could be quite an interesting level. You can see here from 
uh, some of the price activity that was capping some of the um, price movement in the US trading hours last night, but also was previous high as well back on the 22nd. Um, oil lower, um, came under some pressure yesterday and remains somewhat uh, suppressed for the moment. Uh, worth keeping an eye on that 18th and 16th low. Uh, that was what we tested in yesterday at the bottom of that route that we had when we moved from around a 39 and a half kind of dollar price level down to 37 and a half. So pretty decent move in oil yesterday. Just tracking that overall implications then that slowing down the, the reopening of the economy would have on the demand for, for crude. And, and then equities, I just wanted to have a look at um, some of the guys had a really excellent trade on the S&P yesterday uh, as one we were talking about going into the US Open which was yesterday, so just focusing here um, we had the break quite early at the pivot level which was the overnight Asia low uh, and that promoted a bit of a, a push down albeit then uh, fairly short lived you know trading US stock indices very early in the European morning doesn't generally have too much in the way of real momentum behind it uh, given the real volume doesn't kick in until obviously North American trading hours so uh, unsurprising to see then a fairly short-lived move but the overall sentiment I think was really just waiting for the US to come in and obviously there wasn't one singular headline but these latest developments on COVID making people a bit nervous and then at that normal time which typically comes around half an hour 45 minutes after the open on on Wall Street you start getting those COVID updates and that of course then uh, those numbers being so elevated started to see then the push down but the around the open there was a, a great entry point that I know a few of you took you took at the time uh, and that was that initial technical break um, which was also that Asia low and yesterday's pivot which provided a nice point to, to get into that move uh, and then obviously some opportunities as well to to scale out of that trade i.e. the targets being formed from the prior or the morning's low. So target one and then target two was that Navarro spike low. Uh, so and then target three for those who I know there's one or two that did hold it all the way down. Um, so kind of one, two and three on that exit. So absolutely fantastic yesterday on that on that trade. Um, I was just looking at actually on the S&P on a, on a daily continuation chart. Uh, fairly interesting here. Um, I was just drawing up this trend channel going back to the recovery that really we've had since March and also the blue line being the 200 DMA and you can see the two kind of technical signals both coordinating this morning. You've got that 200 DMA uh, which was supportive of the price action yesterday. We did bounce off that exact level and we have already done so as well this morning. Uh, but that does coincide with the bottom end of that trend channel which you can see was last respected going back to kind of mid-June. Uh, I know it's quite rough but uh, I think it's definitely valid uh, on these higher time frames. So yeah definitely it's getting interesting and, and yeah more signs I guess of it's kind of a domino effect. Increased cases leads to more um, I guess safety measures from a health perspective meaning there's quarantines taking in, in various different areas and you know when you talk about areas like New York and New Jersey which are highly den uh, the density pop in terms of its population putting a 14 day quarantine is certainly going to be uh, a little bit of problematic in terms of this this push to try and get these these key states performing once again uh, and then likewise in the likes of California, Florida and Texas which are which are seeing those those record high levels at the moment. So yeah, definitely still very much sensitive to, to COVID numbers going forward in today's session for sure. Uh, and here's just a, a, a quick run through of some of those things we've just discussed. So yeah, the headlines being then that stocks for several states post the highest one day increase in nationwide totals uh, rise. So the nationwide total here, not quite yet the highest that we have seen in the peak of the main acceleration phase that we had during um, April which is when we peaked out it's just slightly above where we are at the moment but certainly you know the, this is a wave in that sense uh, and it is coming and you can see quite a consistent pickup that we've had over the last couple of days here uh, and on the actual state by state level 
you know, these are kind of the hot, the hot spots that have been in focus um, in the south and west in particular. Uh, and as you can see, New York, quite the opposite. You remember, New York was really the focal point of the main outbreak or episode of it in North America. Um, on the northeast coast was where it was most felt in terms of cases and consequent deaths. However, they've done a, a pretty good job at just getting it under control and that, that curve has remained fairly flat at the moment. Uh, it's these other areas um, that, have, that have been generally under quite a lot of pressure from, from the president uh, on the state level to try and reopen uh, to get the economy firing again, which you could argue has led to this next considerable phase of, a, of an increase. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's really it for me to talk about. There's not a great deal else um, going on. A um, couple of other things to, to probably mention. Uh, a few other facts that I saw I was just reading through the articles this morning was what's interesting here is uh, the public uh, is not psychologically immune to COVID-19. That's another thing that people are looking at in terms of when they're talking about the speed of the recovery. There's obviously more immediate things like if you're self-quarantined, whether obviously you can't get out and about and you can't travel and so on. That's obviously a problem in terms of reopening an economy. But psychologically, um, especially old people, so baby boomers account for something like 30 to 35 percent of consumer spending in, in the US. And those people are the ones that are more self-conscious of the fact that they're older and that the virus in itself as what we've been led to believe. And I guess the data has suggested it, it can affect just given age and underlying medical conditions, these other things, older people. And so, you know, can you ex expect then kind of consumer spending just to bounce back? Well, you know, there are many different variables to consider here. And I think that's quite an interesting one that I haven't really seen mentioned too much before, this kind of psychological immunity that, that probably doesn't exist for certain pockets of uh, certain types of demographics and baby boomers do uh, contribute to quite a large amount of consumer spending within North America. Um, weak demand is also forcing US employers to lay off workers, keeping new applications for unemployment benefits high. The initial jobless claims, of course, is expected this afternoon. It's expected to come in at 1.3 million, so slightly uh, lower than the prior week's 1.5 million. Uh, but the point being here as well as we go forward is you know all of these other measures that have taken place, like stimulus checks, or furloughing staff, you know, these things typically can't last forever. Uh, and so, yeah, it's definitely gonna be interesting in the period ahead to see, but we've already heard, of course, from Steve Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary a few days ago, that they're looking to get kind of more stimulus into the system. Uh, and that is gonna be needed, just going on the back of what's happening here. So again, we go into this counterbalance of um, how bad the virus is to how much can they throw at it to try and, and rectify that situation to get people to remain confident uh, that their jobs will be secured, that they will have an income, that the virus will go in the end and then you know, people can, can return to some degree of normality. So that's the trade-off at the moment and, uh, and what happened yesterday in my mind was that one side overtook the other in that respect and particularly the trigger point as I've, I've said in the last couple of briefings is monitoring the virus numbers, yes, but as soon as we start seeing companies, states individually in America start rolling back, putting the brakes on the reopening of the economy, that's problematic then to the shape of the recovery and that's got to be reflected on prices. Uh, it does also come, of course, with trade tensions resurfacing between the EU and the US. Not exactly great timing for what is unfolding at the moment for all parties concerned. Uh, the EU is also debating whether to keep the door shut to American travellers coming to Europe this summer. Uh, so you know, it's kind of the worst time at the moment for this kind of um, protectionist kind of mentality uh, on a global level when you're facing what is uh, an equally so a pandemic that will affect everyone, whatever colour, creed, shape or form. So um, that also just making the markets a little bit tentative at this time. Um, on an actual calendar basis, what have we got today? Uh, pretty quiet actually in the morning and not until we get to around midday you've got the ECB minutes for the June meeting. 
uh, this coming, if I remember correctly, when they over delivered on 100 billion more on the PEPP. So it could be quite interesting to see what comes out of the actual minutes there. Uh, then in the afternoon, you've got US durable goods, the 130. This is the final GDP uh, for Q1, so very backward looking now. And remember, you know, the expectation for Q2 is going to be. Um, you know, 25% north of that, perhaps, um, for Q2 for US GDP, and that's going to be a really key one that we'll see in the coming weeks for sure. Uh, to see the depths economically of, you know, we've obviously seen all the bits come in, all the economic data points in various parts of the economy through recent weeks, but actually seeing that advanced GDP for Q2 is going to be obviously very particularly interesting. Um, then you've got the jobless claims, as I mentioned, um, and You've got US bank stress tests as well coming out at 9.30. It usually generates a few headlines, but doesn't often then lead to um, a great deal of, of market movement. And definitely in the context of the broader picture at the moment, I don't think it's really going to get a look in when, when everyone's so kind of COVID aware at the moment. Speaker wise, ECB's Schnabel speaking at 1.30, Mersch at uh, 2.40. Bank of England's chief economist and also the one sole dissenter for the decision to increase quantitative easing at last week's Bank of England interest rate decision, Andy Haldane. He's going to be speaking at 6 p.m. Um, the topic is what is the future of society? So it's not exactly on topic of policy, but um, given the nature of the fact that um, he dissented against the group and he was the only one to have done so on QE uh, last time out, I'd be quite interested to see. Uh, what he has to say as well so yeah that's it um, so remember to uh, fill in the web webinar registration if you would like to join me for the NYSE Open otherwise uh, anything I've covered here or any questions that you do have just feel free to leave a comment absolutely happy to help uh, and wish you guys a good day alright see you tomorrow